I want you to think about three goals that you'd like to achieve in three areas of your life. Number one, what's one personal goal that you'd like to achieve? Why don't you think about that? My first personal goal was to buy my mother a home. I'm one of seven children that my adopted mother adopted. And I feel like Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. She was a domestic worker on Miami Beach in the United States. And she cleaned homes and she kept children. And we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. She cooked for families, and we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. These were very kind and generous people. They would say, Mamie, whatever food is left over, you can pack it up and take it home to those children that you have adopted. And I used to walk around these big, beautiful mansions, and I said, Mama! And she said, What is it, Leslie? When I become a man, I'm going to buy you a big, beautiful home just like this. How many have somebody special you'd like to do something for? Raise your hands, please. Very good. We're going to show you how you can make that happen. Now I want you to think about your financial goals, growing your business, uh, advancing your career, taking your life to the next level. I want you to think about the goals that you've set for yourself, why you've invested in yourself and being here. And whatever the goals are that you've set for yourself, and I hope you've raised the bar on yourself, I want you to multiply it a hundredfold. I found that most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. I found that most people fail in life because they do what I did for most of my life, aim too low and hit. And many name, never aim at all. Now I want you to think about your social contribution. What will be different because you showed up? Horace Mann said we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. One of the goals I have is reduce the number of women who die from breast cancer. My mother was a 22-year breast cancer conqueror. How many men over 40? Raise your hands, please. Men over 40. Very good. One of the goals every time I speak, I encourage men to get their PSA test, which stands for prostate specific antigen, and their digital rectal examination. And I'll be glad Nick can check our prostate by walk, looking in our ears. You know, it's got to be a better way. <laughs> I'm turning red as I talk about it, but you can't see it. <laughs> a friend of mine was at a medical convention. Hey, Les, let me give you a free rectal. He said, no, buddy, you're too motivated. <laughs> Homie, don't roll like that, you know. <laughs> One of the goals I have is teaching people how to tell their story, how to grow their business, be the voice of their business, how to improve the customer service, how to develop their leadership voice how to go from being local to being global. I want you to think about the things that you want to do with your life, the kind of impact that you want to make. And as you think about those three categories, let us say together with conviction, it's possible. Together, please. Everybody together, please. Say, it's possible. You know, the easiest thing I do is come up here prepared to speak for you. But the most difficult thing that I've ever done, and took me years to do, was to believe that I could do it. Given my beginning, born in an abandoned building on a floor in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City with a twin brother, being adopted, being labeled educable, mentally retarded in the fifth grade and put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade and failing again in the eighth grade and not having any college education. And if both my birth parents stood up and said, hello, son, I would not know either one. You know, I, I saw a movie late one night, and in this, this movie called Magnolia, Tom Cruise, and there was a line in there that said, we might be through with our past, but our past is not through with us. How many of you know there are things that we've experienced that can impact the way we see ourselves? Raise your hand as you understand that. And so, so as you look at yourself and look at your goals, I want you to write this down. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. You have to create an achiever's mindset. Not, you have to create that yourself. My favorite book says, Be ye not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what you're doing right now is an indication of what's most important. As you begin to invest in yourself, setting aside a time to be here. This is the era where the late Peter Drucker calls the era of the three C's. Accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. 
And so as you look at yourself and look at your goals, setting aside time every day to work on your mindset, to expand your vision of what's possible for you. They did an interview with Warren Buffett, one of the richest men on the planet, as you're aware. And they asked him... So what's the most important investment people can make today? And this was in the middle of the recession in the United States. Here's a guy that has billions of dollars in real estate, billions of dollars in the stock market, and he said the most important investment you can make is in yourself. Everybody repeat after me, please. Live full. Die empty. Say it again. Live full. Die empty. After having 238 radiation seed implants, I was reading one night some words by Dr. Howard Thurman, who was a mentor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., to Albert Schweitzer, to Mahatma Gandhi. He wrote, Deep is the hunger, the voice of the genuine, the centering moment. As I was reflecting on his words, he said, The ideal situation for a man or woman to die is to have family members praying with them as they cross over. He said, but imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those gifts. You never used those talents. And there they are staring at you as you're lying on your bed with large angry eyes saying, we came to you, and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you died today, what dreams, what talents, what abilities, what gifts, what ideas would die with you? One minister out of the Hamas said, the wealthiest place on the planet is not in the Four East where there's oil on the ground. It's not in South Africa where there are diamond mines. He said, the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. And there you see potential never realized.
realized. There you find books never written. There you find ideas never acted on. Maybe that's why Henry David Thoreau said, Oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived. Only to realize that you've never scraped the surface of your potential. Let us say again, live full. Die empty. And so as you think about your goals and dreams, I'm suggesting that you set aside time every day if you're not doing it already. Reading 10 to 15 pages of something positive every day. Listening to audio programs. Investing in yourself to expand your mind for what it's possible. To develop a, a, a spirit of optimism. And then the next thing is, let us say together, it's necessary. You see, not only is it possible that you can live your dream and that you have to sell yourself on that every day. There's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. I didn't do this for 14 years because I convinced myself I couldn't do it. I would go see the late Zig Ziglar and Jim Rowan and the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale and I saw Tony Robbins and, and my heart said, I could do that. How many of you like to help people? Raise your hands, please. I said, I can do that. And then when I would go to the parking lot, my, my inner voice would become activated and say, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You've never worked for a major corporation. Les Brown, you can't do that. You, who wants to hear anything you've got to say? How many ever thought about something you wanted to do and you, you talk yourself out of it? Raise your hands, please. And so that's, that's why... It's necessary that we work on ourselves and let us say together, OQP, only quality people, write that down. As you think about your goals and dreams over the next two year, over the next two days, it's very important that you look at the people in your life and you ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? MIT did a study. The study indicated that you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. Whoa, when I heard that, I got a lot of broke people out of my life. My mama said, son, if you run around with nine broke people, I guarantee you, you'll become number 10. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough out of Atlanta said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. So as you think about your goals and dreams, detoxify your life. Les, can I change them? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. And there are some people that are so negative they can walk into a dark room and begin to develop. <laughs> and so it's very important that you look at the people that's in your circle and begin to understand, are you growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually and professionally? Are they an asset to you or a liability to you? The other thing is, as you look at your goals and look at your dreams,